I apologize. I'm accountable. Will Catherine Sebelius be fired because of the Obamacare website? I say, who cares? The next bureaucrat won't change the fact that central planning produces failure like this car. It's hard to drive. It spews pollution. And that's what we get with Obamacare. The site isn't working the way it's supposed to yet. Now the Obama administration is conceding that some people will have to pay more. Double digit increases. This Halloween, politicians gave us something we should be scared of. Obamacare. And that product is working. It's really good. <laughs> Obama scare. That's our show tonight. John Stossel. Happy Halloween. What scares you? Nothing scares me as much as big government and central planning. This, stuff like this, this is Obamacare. This kind of micromanagement takes our money and limits our freedom. Government can't even count votes accurately, yet now they're going to manage all of our health care? A few weeks ago, the president addressed the failure of his website, and he made one point that's absolutely true. The Affordable Care Act is not just a website. It's much more. Right. This is so much more. The failure of the online exchange is just a symptom of this disease, government micromanagement. They can't make a website work, and yet for years, a private company offered something called eHealth. Millions of people go there and comparison shop. Many buy insurance. The website lists different companies, prices, deductibles. They've enrolled more than two million people. Health policy analyst John Goodman points out that eHealth could enroll the entire country if it were given the freedom to do that. But government says no. eHealth is private. Not a single exchange has contracted with eHealth. The central planners say government does it better. Michael Burgess is skeptical of that. He was a doctor, an obstetrician in Texas, then he stopped practicing to take a much less useful job. He's now a congressman. Doctor, Congressman Burgess, you wrote an op-ed where you said America was supposed to be different from Europe. What's your point? Well, honestly, the, um, the whole premise of the founding of our society was that it was a free society based on limited government with the government with the consent of the governed. Uh, we broke away from a country where uh, the divine right of kings was the, uh, the popular philosophy. You, you owed the king the tithe, the tax, because after all, he was anointed by God. But we this don't law have that passed, in this country. The, a majority at the time voted for it. Uh, it passed, and as the president is, it was, is apt to tell you very quickly, it passed muster through the Supreme Court with some changes. Um, you know, it is still in the purview of the United States Congress to change something that uh, that is bad, say, change something that people don't want. And r really, the, the next step in this drama, if you will, is up to the American people. I mean, I, I've done what I can for the last three years to either try to deflect or improve or not damage people so badly with this thing. But honestly, I mean, it, and John, do you remember back in 1988 when the catastrophic health care plan of Dan Rostenkowski was repealed after the people rose up as one and said, you got to get rid of this thing? That's the type of, of citizen involvement that's going to be required to reverse course on what you correctly point up is a, is a massive government overreach. All right, let's move on from the legislation itself and just the ideas. The European idea is that health care is a right. And why do you say to these American politicians making the same point? Healthcare is a right and not a privilege. A right, not a privilege. Not a privilege for a fortunate few, but a right for every one of us to enjoy. If it's a right, government should give it to people. I, I prefer to look at it more as a responsibility. And I recognized it was a my responsibility to provide uh, to provide food, housing, and health care for my family. Um, what about really right poor now, and helpless people? 
Well, John, you know there are safety net programs, and I'm, no one in the, there, no one is suggesting that those be done away with. But why in the world would you expand what well, was started out to be a safety net program to, to almost half the country, which is what uh, what the Medicaid expansion and the Affordable Care Act does? I mean, if we were doing such a great job there, then people would have embraced it. But in fact, they have not because. The, the those those safety net programs have been part of the problem that have driven up costs in in delivering health care in the in the United States. Uh, there were ways to reform those programs and not make them so deleterious, but uh, for whatever reason, we chose not to do that. And when they say a right, I, I would point out that free speech is a right, but that's about being left alone. If health care is a right, that means that they have a right to forcibly force you to treat someone or force forcibly take your money to treat someone. What's your answer to your colleague, uh, Congressman Alan Grayson, who on the floor of Congress said this? The Republicans' health care plan for America, don't get sick. That's right, don't get sick. If you get sick, America, the Republican health care plan is this. Die quickly. So you work with the gentleman. You want people to die quickly? You know, I, I, I don't know. I've never spoken to him about that speech, and I'm, I wonder if today he regrets making it. But here's, here's the thing. It, you have the ability in this country, perhaps more so than any other country in the world, to access what is a, a very forward-leaning health care system. I'm, I practiced in it for years. I know that. I know everyone didn't have insurance, and I certainly didn't respect, didn't expect compensation from everyone that I saw, but there are there were ways to deal with the problems at hand. And unfortunately, what the president, what the Congress did three and a half years ago was successfully threw people off the off the scent of how to fix things. And the, the result is what we have now. And that's why you have people so upset. I mean, the, the president knew in the federal, uh, the federal health, or I'm sorry, the, 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 the federal register back in June of 2010, that the millions of people that we're now hearing about that are losing their health insurance, they knew that. They knew that over three years ago, and yet they chose to do nothing about it. Thank you, Congressman Burgess. Most of the discussion over Obamacare starts with the assumption that government or someone else, maybe some insurance company, should pay for our health care. It's a right, they say. But think about how this perverts incentives. What if we bought food the way we pay for health care? What would that be like? I'd buy steak after steak. Why not? My insurance company is paying for most of it. Why should I get hamburger? I'll just get the finest cuts of steak and lots of them. But this seems crazy. And yet, that's how we buy our health care. Betsy McCoy, former Lieutenant Governor of New York, actually read through all this. Uh, this requires that basically everybody get everything. Everything, not steak, not that quality, but the law requires that everyone have the one size fits all government design benefit package. It has to have all 10 categories in it. So the 50 year old couple, they've got to pay for maternity care. And the straight arrow, he has to pay for inpatient substance the abuse treatment. The president says you might need that. He wants everyone okay. to be protected. The assumption is that we are too stupid to choose our own health insurance. That's why right now, millions of people who were promised they could keep their health plan if they liked it are being herded out of those plans. You could almost hear the whip cracking because in the Because the new background. plans include all this stuff. Oh, yes. And suddenly... The Washington bureaucrats and people like Kathleen Sebelius have changed the promise. It's not you can keep your plan if you like it. It's you had a plan that was garbage. It was a scam and you were too stupid to know it. So now we're giving you the package that we know is right. Which costs a lot more. Of course it does. Of course it does because it includes all these things you don't need, but they want you to have it, not because you're going to use those services, because you're going to put your money in there so they can spend your money taking care of somebody else. And you, for example, colonoscopies. A 30-year-old man doesn't need that kind of, quote, free preventive care. And being forced to pay for colonoscopy feels almost as bad as having to get one. Well, but we got to cover the people who do need it. Get the healthy to pay for the sick. It sounds kind. But that's not how this law was sold. True. The president knew that to sell this law, he had to say, you can keep what you have if you like it. Let's just take care of the uninsured. 
it was a scam from the beginning. And as, as they, the ugly reality of central planning is now being revealed, the left continues to run celebrations of how great Obamacare is, especially for you women. Carol, be free. Well, when you pay nothing for something, you overuse it. Where's the tooth fairy? They're suggesting that there is a tooth fairy. Then none of that is free, John. It's included up front in your premium. And the reason men's premiums are doubling is that they're paying for it even though they don't use it. So let's go to the president's promise about the cost. When he was campaigning, he repeatedly said, I sounded sincere, your insurance premiums will go down. We're going to lower your premiums by $2,500 per family per year. Think he Does believed he sell it? used cars? That must be what he did before. He sounds like a demagogue. It's yeah. very unbecoming of the president. You don't the think the central is, planners really thought somehow no. by including the, the young are people? Double. There's a reason. These premiums include $100 billion in new taxes that insurance companies are passing on. So when you write your premium check every month, it includes a big chunk to Uncle Sam. And of course, it includes paying for this big benefit package, only a little a bit of which may be relevant to your life. Let's play another commercial from the incredible Thanks Obamacare website. It starts with hearts beating for Obamacare. Then it goes to history. Costs were rising sharply. But then in 2009, something wonderful happened. But that was Obamacare, but bad people. That's you, Beth. You spread misinformation, clouded the truth, and said there'd be rationing. But health care won out. Yippee, Obamacare. You forgot the end of the story. Over half this law is paid for by cuts to Medicare. Hospitals are already laying off nurses. The care is being spread thinner. This plan, unfortunately, lowers the standard of care. That's why I said the stake is not what's going in your shopping cart. And it puts government in charge of your care. And it takes away something as precious as life itself, your liberty. And what we libertarians want is more individual decisions, but that means people pay for more of their health care themselves. Pe $5,000. $5,000 deductible in the bronze plan and a $3,000 deductible in the silver plan. That's for an individual. Those deductibles are so high that young people are never going to get a nickel back. But there's these zero copay, free birth control, etc. Check the details. <laughs> it's not a good deal. Thank you, Betsy McCoy. If you'd like to keep this conversation going on Facebook or Twitter, you can use that hashtag ObamaScare to let people know what you think. Coming up, something I like has happened because of this law. It's not the celebrity pitches for Obamacare like this one, although we'll get to those two. But I was surprised that Obamacare may have accomplished something good. Now, a lot of folks have been talking about our new healthcare enrollment website, how it's been crashing and freezing and shutting down and stalling and not working and breaking and sucking. <laughs> when the liberal media criticized their favorite administration, you know the problems are pretty bad. But this news was so glaring, even they couldn't ignore it. This week I was trying to think, who might have some real insight into the website screw up? And then one of those annoying alerts popped up on my computer screen. Warning, virus detected, your computer's at risk. This actually is not a scam. McAfee is the world's biggest security technology company. And the engineer who founded it, John McAfee, joins us now. So John, you were asked to help fix the Obamacare site. Well, I was. I've, I think the reason is what you just mentioned. I did found the world's largest uh, computer security company and uh, in the industry, I'm known as a reasonably competent engineer. 
Uh, however, on the negative side, my, uh, my past history and, and lifestyle uh, would not make the best PR image for, for helping. In any case, I chose to turn them down because I did not think they were serious about implementing what had to be done, which is throw it out and start over. And uh, not serious is also part of your belief that the way government works is just not conducive to producing a competent website. Well, no, absolutely not. There, there, are, there are a whole bunch of reasons for that. Uh, there is a, a, a Federal Acquisition Requirements Manual, which is 2,000 pages long. Which, I happen which to have the, uh, that here. <laughs> 2,000 pages, yes. Right. And, and so, so anybody who works with the feds to do anything has to obey this. And if you're going to do a website, you, for Obamacare, you also have to understand and obey 6,000 more pages. That's correct. That's correct. So, so th the total of 8,000 pages, you have to be a government expert, not a technology expert, to just meet the requirements. Uh, and the proposals are as large as the requirements. Proposals are sometimes thousands of pages long, so uh, that's not conducive. In a, in a company like Google, when you do a project, you, you go into a room with a blank sheet of paper and one requirement, make it work. Uh, and then you get to choose exactly what needs to be done given the technology at that moment. The FAR has things in it that say you have to have uh, v use VHS recorders and, and <laughs> adhere to standards that no longer exist. It's bizarre. But that's, but that's government. And not only did this not work, but you've discovered that there are security holes. Well, yeah, I, I alerted the, 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 the press to that very early on, uh, not least of which is that they did not bother the, whoever, whoever's doing, and by the way, it's not just central planning, it's central management that makes things work, too. You can plan all you want, but if there's no one managing and, co and coordinating the process, it well, won't work. Why is this a hacker's wet dream, and why does it put the person in danger if you use the site? For, for a number of reasons. Number one, there are over 700 sites now that are scam sites uh, based on the fact that the government did not uh, take up all the, the uh, copycat names. Normally for a, a, a site of this size, remember they're spending a hundred million dollars for the software, you'd spend about two or three hundred thousand to buy up every conceivable name that people might type in that sounds like it. Obamacare.com, healthcare.org, whatever. So now uh, there are 700 that. sites that people may go to thinking they're going to the Obamacare site, but it's some scammer who wants your credit card information. Absolutely, and once you, once you input that information, your bank account is likely to be emptied. And this is identity theft of the highest order. The president said, well, the site went down because we had 8 million users in a week. Well, yeah, they had 8 million users in a week, but they only had uh, less than a, a single digit uh, number of people who successfully signed up. I mean, I, I know that I know that 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 every system has glitches. You know, the the uh, the iPhone has glitches, but a glitch uh, is a, a minor annoyance. That is, when you got the iPhone, you could still make calls. You could uh, you could you could text. You could check your email and yeah, search the web. Work. It still worked, but th this is a catastrophic failure. It's not a glitch. It was not tested, there was no quality assurance, and there was no system integration. And but these are all things But now government is going to run all of our health care. That's just a scary thought. The CGI awarded the contract. We'll learn more about that. John McAfee, thank you for joining us with your expertise. You're welcome, sir. Now, rewarding companies like CGI, because they can wade through all this regulation, rather than hiring specialists who really know software, won't work for long in the private sector, because private companies, with their own money on the line, quickly have learned to figure out who does not deliver. Canadian journalist Brian Lilly says he wasn't surprised when he learned CGI, which is a Canadian-based company, was behind the Obamacare website. Brian, why? Well, this is a company that has figured out how to work with government regulations, John. They have figured out how to wade through, a, what is it, 6,000 regulations that are governing the building of the Obamacare website. They know how to do that. They've been doing it here for a long time. They were established in the 1970s. And yet they and have a history of failure in Canada. A history of failure. They would, I'm sure, point to some successes if you had their executives on right now. But let me get, just give you a few of these. 
46 million dollars was spent uh, just to have them go away uh, after you know paying them for a while to build a diabetes registry in Ontario for the Ontario health system. The goal was create an, an electronic health record for every citizen in the, the country's most populous province. Their small part of that billion dollar project which didn't deliver anything was a diabetes registry they couldn't deliver it decade earlier they were given a, a contract for the new brunswick uh, government small little province down next to maine about the same size tiny uh, they couldn't deliver on that it went from 4.5 million to 35 million uh, they built the federal gun registry a gun control initiative to track every rifle and hunting uh, shotgun in the country and they were eventually fired after about ninety million dollars and uh, the project not right, working. I'm, I'm, severely I'm, getting the, I'm getting the drift. You also say that mm -hmm. maybe they got the job because they had crony connections with the administration? Well, I think actually, it, and we'll get to the, the Michelle Obama one in a minute, but I think that the crony connection should have helped the administration know that they shouldn't have hired these guys. I'll give you just a couple of examples. If they had called up the most recent uh, government health contract, that'd be the province of Ontario, they could have had David Axelrod call the Premier of Ontario, Dalton McGuinty. He, he used had to work studied for under Axelrod. You know, same political advisor as Barack Obama. Valerie Jarrett, her daughter married the son of a cabinet minister in Ontario. They we, both we have met a picture of them. They, they partied together. Yeah, so you've got these backroom connections. They could have called and said, are these guys any good? No, you're firing them? Okay, we're done. But maybe it was this uh, uh, Tony Towns uh, Whitley, who was Michelle Obama's classmate, that would have been the, uh, the, the Trump card because she's a senior uh, she's vice, vice president, president at CGI. The company. It, this is part of the way that, it, from my perspective, how CGI operates in terms of having connections. And then when they get in, they don't just build and leave the way a John McAfee would. They build and they stay and they're part of the system. And that brings them more money. All very friendly. We call that crony capitalism. Thank you, Brian. So Thank you. the websites are a flop. Costs are up. You may have lost insurance you liked. But I was surprised that because of Obamacare, something good has happened. I'll tell you what that is next. Here it is, Obamacare, 2,000 pages. This is what scares me on Halloween. The idea that the American people vote for politicians who think it's good to micromanage life with stuff like this. I mean, this is awful. This kind of central planning reduces our choices and complicates life. But there's a silver lining, something I hadn't expected. Avik Roy of the Manhattan Institute specializes in health care, and he noticed that too. Parts of Obamacare by accident have done something good? Possibly, yeah. Which is? So one of the things that Obamacare does, as we know, is that it attempts to set up these insurance exchanges where people can shop for coverage. Plus, of course, it, uh, it doesn't touch that much. It modestly increases the set of regulations in the employer-based market. The sum total of these effects is possibly to increase the number of people who shop for coverage on their own and have health savings accounts and catastrophic coverage, which is exactly the kind of insurance that free market people have said we've always wanted to have. And that that makes sense. And we should point out that the old system was no free market paradise. Absolutely. Six out of 10 health care dollars were spent by the government before Obamacare. This is such an important point because so many Americans have the impression, and left and right, that we had a free market system in America before Obamacare and all those European countries were social welfare states. That's not exactly right. America is, has a single payer system for the elderly, for low income people. Medicare, Medicaid. Medicare and Medicaid. And the employer sponsored system isn't really a true free market system either. The government stacks the tax rules so we get insurance from our employers which is stupid. People it's another get form of dependence. It's another form of dependence. You're dependent on your employer for coverage instead of buying it for yourself and controlling those health dollars yourself. So as this bad bill gives people higher costs, more people are waking up and paying attention to what health care costs for the first time. People thought everything should be free. Many are buying health savings accounts. Explain. Absolutely. So what's happened is in 2003, a law passed during the Bush years legalized effectively the use of health savings accounts to save for your own health care. That should never have been illegal, but 
Right, Absolutely. Pass this law. So now that you can save for your, your own health care tax-free, it's kind of like a 401k for your health care. You can take that money and invest it. And then instead and if you of, don't spend it this year, you have it rolls over. Left, it rolls over. Instead of having a comprehensive health insurance plan that where you pay a high premium and then at the end of the year, if you're healthy and you didn't use it, all that money evaporates, you have, can have a smaller premium. If you get hit by a bus, you have a heart attack, you're covered for those catastrophic conditions. And then the rest of the time, you're saving at that, and that rolls up and accumulates over years and years and, and years. And because it's your money, you start to ask the doctor, gee, does it have to cost that much? You can shop based on price, based on value, based on quality. All of a sudden, the doctors are, ca are catering to you. The hospitals are catering to you. We have a new example of that from Oklahoma, where the medical center at the University of Oklahoma posts prices. Yeah, and, and they're doing a huge business because there's enormous demand from neighboring states, from neighboring countries, where people say, you know what, in Dallas, you know, I'm being charged $20,000 for a knee replacement. I can send this guy to Oklahoma to the surgical center that posts their prices online and save 15000 bucks. And this kind of competition is not just what brings lower prices. It also can lead to innovation sometimes. I noticed the Detroit Medical Center bragged when the Obamacare debate was happening. We're going to be the first Michigan hospital with, to use barcodes for medication scanning. And that's probably a good thing. But supermarkets did it with candy and Coke. 35 years ago. And why did it take 35 years? Because consumers weren't in charge of their own health dollars. Look at LASIK, look at cosmetic surgery, you know these examples. In LASIK, the technology keeps getting better and the prices keep going down. Why? Because insurance doesn't cover LASIK surgery. And the doctors, to compete, even give you their cell phone numbers and email addresses. Exactly. My doctor will not do that. Have a great, thank you very much. My keep pleasure. fighting the fight coming up. President Obama got celebrities to tell people, go sign up for coverage, and celebrities were eager to help. You can sign up for healthcare online in 10 minutes. Obamacare! You may have grown more skeptical of government-managed health insurance, but there's one group of people who tend to be gung-ho for anything Obama, and that's celebrities. Here's an actress whom I like. Hi, I'm Elizabeth Banks, and if you need health insurance, you can find affordable coverage at the new health insurance marketplace at healthcare.gov. Now, she did record that along with a bunch of other celebrities, uh, presumably before she knew that healthcare.gov might not work. Maybe she regrets doing that pitch now. I don't know, because her agent didn't return our phone calls. But whether she regrets it or not, the point is that this administration has been very successful in getting celebrities to endorse its policies. Reason Magazine's Peter Suderman studies this kind of stuff. Uh, celebs are especially useful because Obamacare really needs young people to sign up for it to work. That's right. Turning out young people is crucial to make this law work. Uh, that's what the Obama administration says. Their numbers show that in order for this law to really work and be sustainable, they need about 2.7 million people, young people, uh, young and relatively healthy folks, to sign up for exchanges in the first year. Uh, and the reason they need that is because these young people, by paying more and by not using very much health care, will kind of balance out the premiums and create a broad risk pool. Uh, that, that will pay to cover for the, the folks geezers the like me who are much more likely to get sick and whose costs would be much higher. So I get a break and the young people pay more. Right. And this is campaign style uh, marketing. And in fact, the Obama administration has really thought about this in the exact same way that they've thought about the presidential political campaigns in which Obama was actually quite successful at turning out young people to vote. But this time they're not trying but to also, get them to just vote. While you're on that, let's point out that he hired these private consultants who were brilliant at using the Internet. But when it came to setting up the Obamacare website, he used these government contractors who stank. Well, I, I mean, it's very clear that the Obama administration is much better versed and, uh, you know, has a lot more experience doing the marketing side of politics rather than the administrative and technical side, and that has really foiled them here. Um, you know, the, like I said, the issue with the campaign here is that they, uh, in the past, they've tried to get people to vote. Now they're trying to get them to sign up for coverage. 
It's a really big difference. It's really important because going to vote, that doesn't cost you anything except whatever time it takes you to get there. These insurance policies, for young people in particular, are going to be fairly expensive. Uh, we, we've seen reports that say that in all 50 states, policies for young people are going to be more expensive. On average, they're going to be about 260% more expensive for young men, 190% and you can buy a car for, for that. women. I mean, the, the prices that we're seeing uh, in many cases are going to be uh, the same price as a monthly payment on a car. And so that's the a brand kind of new Toyota people, Corolla for that. And that's right. So they want to brainwash them, and celebrities are helping. We have uh, Nina Dubrev, the Vampire Diaries actress. She posed topless on Instagram and then shot a tweet out I'm Canadian. We have health care for all. Go and get covered, because without it, you're naked. And quickly, other celebrities were following, tweeting to get covered. Amy Poehler, Adam Scott, Emily Van Camp. I don't know who all these people are. Some of them uh, went to the White House and met with the president about this. Amy Poehler, Jennifer Hudson, Michael Sarah, Cal Penn. They're in the tank, and, they, and they're in love. I mean, this is the marketing, this is the outreach that they're choosing to do. But the question is, are, is a celebrity-focused campaign going to be enough to get young people to spend $200, $275 a month on health insurance when the alternative is to simply pay a penalty of about $95 next year? That's the question. And this, this is the administration's question is, can we make this work? You know, they actually ran a focus group and they were unable to find uh, that a majority of young people would sign up at the $200 price point, which is what they were asking people about. The Baltimore Ravens got $130,000 to help promote Maryland State Exchange. Shows you the kind of budgets here. I mean, that, that's nothing. Uh, California actually has an $80 million marketing budget just for marketing Obamacare oh, in California. The taxpayer should scream. Thank you, Peter Suderman of the wonderful Reason Magazine. Coming up, I'm critical of Obamacare and the government-dominated system that preceded it, so... Does any country have a better system? Well, yes, says my next guest. There is one. That's next. After looking at Obamacare and the government-dominated system that preceded Obamacare, we searched the world looking for a place where the free market's allowed to work. But there isn't any. Every industrialized country copied the American-European government-heavy model in some form. But there's one place where consumers are given a little more choice and doctors are given a little more freedom so there is more market competition. And sure enough, in that place, people spend less on health care, but they live longer. Where is that place? Well, William Hasseltine just flew in from there. So where is that? That's Singapore. So that's on the other side of the world. You just took the overnight flight. You're looking pretty right. fresh. That's Thank you. good. Uh, you have been studying Singapore, and how does it work? They have a system in which there's a mandatory 401k. That's what we would call it. It's a savings plan, and part of that savings plan you use for your own health. So it's out of pocket. That accounts it's for government run. You must employers and the workers that's must right. contribute. They must contribute. But it's your money, it's not a tax. Like the health savings accounts we just talked about. That's right. It's like a, it is a health savings account, but it's also a housing savings account and a retirement account. Uh, but you use that money, and it's three quarters of the health care expenses. And when it's your money, you're more careful. So unlike in America, maybe where we pay for 10% of the stuff directly, three-fourths of it, the consumer spends right. in Singapore, so they shop around. And they also have a... Um, catastrophic health insurance plan, which on the average costs 2% of the U.S. health insurance bill. 2%. Because it's just for the catastrophe, That's unlike right. our plans, which is covering everything. Right. And then the second principle they have is transparency. And that is critical. Transparency in price, transparency in outcome. If you're going to shop, you better know what you're buying. So they post prices, you could send their lower prices in Singapore, angioplasty, $13,000 in the United States, 83000 gastric bypass, 15000 versus 70000 Also, the, the hospitals have greater autonomy. Right. What they've done is they've incorporated them so they're autonomously run units that compete with one another. They compete with one another on cost and quality and uh, 
It gives the consumer a choice. And if they make some extra profit, they can reinvest that in their hospital. That's right. And life expectancy there is longer than in the United States. Right. It's not it's much longer than the United States, but in addition to that, it's every other major. If you look at child mortality, maternal mortality, death under the age of five, death of young people, and the incidence of diabetes and many other diseases, they do much better than we do. The United States is in fact just slightly above the Dominican Republic. Well that's on like the WHO survey which right. rates equality of care as if that's something Yeah, perfect. but lifespan is pretty but dramatic. part of it's because we shoot each other more often. I said this to Michael Moore. We <laughs> well, I'm not sure We're about that. We're fatter than the people in Singapore. Yeah, that's true. And we drive cars and kill ourselves right. on the highway more often. So lifespan is not, I would say, the best game. I think it's a pretty good measure, but childhood mortality is a very good measure. And they're not driving cars, and they're not shooting each other, and they're not smoking. Thank you, William Hazeltine. You've written a book about uh, this called Affordable Excellence, the Singapore Healthcare Story. I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Coming up, my take on Obamacare. All this talk about the Obamacare website misses the bigger problem. Central planning, which is what this is, rarely works well. The last thing we want to trust central planning with is our health care. Now, central planning can work okay if you throw enough money at it. Most Americans like their public schools. People like European trains. Some like Air France. Most Canadians like their single-payer system. But over time, Central planning tends to break down. It took the Soviet Union 70 years to fail. But socialism eventually fails. Capitalism won the Cold War, and now we're adopting the economic system that lost? This is nuts. It happens because central planning appeals. Its promises sound good. We're going to lower your premiums by $2,500 per family per year. Hooray! People want to believe that. We don't have time to read all the details, but hey, the president went to Harvard. He and his experts must know how to manage health care better than the confusing competition we have now. So we trust the planners. But we need that competition because without it, you get products like this centrally planned car. These are Trabants, a car made by East Germans, made of plastic. It was a terrible car. He had to put the oil and gas in separately and shake the car to mix them. It's hard to drive. It spews pollution. Yet it was the pride of East Germany. The waiting list to get one was years long. After all, government's experts created it, just as our experts created Obamacare. It is intuitive. If you want the absolutely best car, you get the smartest people together in a room and tell them to design it. But this is what you get, the Trabant. When the Berlin Wall fell, the Trabant just disappeared. It couldn't compete with even our mediocre cars competing in our free market. Here's another example. What if your computer was created by central planners? France tried that 30 years ago. French politicians created the Minitel computer network. Government gave everyone a free computer. You'd think that would have given the French a huge lead in the computer age, but that's not what happened. For-profit competitors in Silicon Valley left France in the dust. Government experts couldn't keep up with the spontaneous experiments where private entrepreneurs called the shots. As economist F.A. Hayek put it, order generated without design can far outstrip plans men consciously contrive. The French government's response was to offer Minitel in six colors. Pathetic. No one wants it. Now you might say Minitel and the Trabant are isolated examples. I'm cherry picking. You know, Air France is okay, and maybe it is. But that's only because it has to compete with private airlines. Obamacare outlaws much of the private competition. Now, some private companies make lousy goods, too, but because they have competition, they often then go out of business. Governments never do. 
Still, the folks who like Obamacare and central planning in general point to Canada. Canadian health care is free. Of course, free just means it's paid for through taxes. And that means less competition and almost no innovation. Governments rarely innovate. They just keep doing what they did last year. You don't get the latest stuff. And you have to wait. If you need a knee replacement or cataract surgery, you may wait years because that's the way central planners hold costs down. In some parts of Canada, they have a lottery to see who will get to see a doctor. Once a week, the town clerk gets this box out of the closet. Inside are the names of everyone in town who wants a family doctor. She pulls out one slip and then calls the lucky winner. I just want to let you know that your name has been drawn for Dr. Keel's patient list. Oh, you're quite welcome. I should say not all of Canadian health care is long lines. Some places do offer easy access to cutting edge technology. CT scan, endoscopy, thoracoscopy, laparoscopy, arthroscopic procedures to evaluate joints for cartilage abnormality. Available all the time. 24 hours, 7 days a week. Patients rarely wait. If I see a patient that's torn a cruciate ligament in that patient's knee, we can generally have that patient scheduled within probably a week. But you have to bark or meow to get this kind of treatment. Want a CT scan in Canada? Vet clinics said they could get a dog in the next day. For people, the waiting list is a month. Many clients will come here with their pets, and as they're leaving, it's when next time I get sick, I want to come here. I, I don't want to go to the regular hospitals. The route to better and cheaper health care is market competition, not this. Let's get rid of that. That's our show. See you next week.